So hello everyone. Um, today I have the opportunity to talk to Brandy Scott, the Chief Research Officer of Atrantil. And we're going to talk about how to best use Atrantil for digestive relief and then just in general what Atrantil is. So hey Brandy, um, and I guess to start off, could you just give us maybe a little bio and kind of what's your role at Atrantil? Hi, yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, so Achantio kind of began about 12 years ago. Um, I was Dr. Kenneth Brown. He's a gastroenterologist. I was his um, research manager at the time. We did a lot of pharmaceutical research. And um, we did a lot of research on IBS pharmaceuticals. Um, we actually did the original studies on Zyfaxin, which is one of the IBS drugs out there now. Um, but what we were finding is that so many people really weren't having good results with this. The efficacy was really low, and not only that, they were having a lot of side effects with these drugs. So we're like, that, that's not really good. You know, we're causing more problems than we're really solving. So, um, so and, the, and the problem with IBS is that really so many doctors just look at people who have IBS and um, who have the bloating, abdominal discomfort, constipation, diarrhea, and it, and it really is a problem. For some people, it can even be debilitating, and they can't leave the house because they don't know where a bathroom is, but so many doctors will just pat them on the head and say, oh, you're fine, or it's just in your head, it's just anxiety, you know, or depression. They put them on antidepressants, or they even tell them, oh, just reduce your stress, but, but that's not really helpful for these people because they do have a real issue. So what Dr. Brown and I started talking, and Dr. Brown really started following um, one of the leading researchers, Dr. Mark Pimentel. Yeah. Dr. Pimentel found in mouse models that um, he said the main cause of this is methane, and if only we could find something to reduce the methane, then um, then we could really have something that would work for these people. So one day, Dr. Brown was in his office. I came into his office, and he said, you know, I've been researching with, uh, you know, all of Dr. Brown's stuff and I mean, Dr. Pimentel's stuff and Dr. Brown said, you know, we need something for methane. And that's kind of when a light bulb went off for me because I, I, um, in my past, I, I was in law school at one point working for um, the governor of Iowa. Yeah. And in Iowa, they have a huge problem with methane emission from cattle. Yeah, so I, I was that. working on policy to reduce methane emissions. So when he said that, I was like, well, I know how to reduce it in cattle. Can we research that and learn how to translate that into humans? So eight years of research, um, we actually were able to formulate something that we thought on paper would work, right? So we're like, okay, we think we got this, but now does it really work? And even though natural products are not required by the FDA to do clinical trials or anything, we really wanted to know if we're going to put our name behind it, we want to have something that really works. So we did our first clinical trial and we had 80% efficacy. And these were people who had these symptoms, bloating, abdominal discomfort, um, diarrhea or constipation. And we're like, okay, that's good. You know, we have 88% eff efficacy, that's good. But now we want to take the worst of the worst. So what we did, we did a second clinical trial of Dr. Brown's patients who they had to have tried and failed um, probiotics, uh, Linzes, Amatiza, and Zyfaxin with neomycin. They had to have tried all those and failed. And we had 80% efficacy. And we were hoping to just help one person. And when we had 80% efficacy, we were thrilled. Um, so we decided, okay, let's move on with this. And so after those clinical trials, um, they were actually even uh, published in peer-reviewed medical journals. Um, after those, we moved forward. Uh, we started to develop Achantil. And it was so novel, our science. Um, and it's a first in class. It's not a digestive enzyme, not a probiotic, not an antibiotic. Um, our science was so novel that um, they say you can't patent nature. Um, mm -hmm. Natural products cannot be patented. However, our science was so novel in our mechanism of action, we actually hold 21 patents in different countries now because of it. So, um, so we moved on, and um, we've been in production for about four years now. So that's kind of my role and background in that. Wow, really cool. I mean, it's such a cool story, and, and to me, it's awesome as well that you're taking, you know, 
natural ingredients and natural product and doing real scientific trials on it. That's kind of cool because a lot of natural products don't have that evidence. Right, absolutely. And, and that's one thing that we're, we've always felt really strongly about is anything that we do, we want to know that it works. We want to have the science behind it and know exactly um, how that plays out. Because if, if we do something, we want to know that it works. And um, we even, you know, we have our NSF certification and NSF, I'm not sure if you know what that is, but um, a lot of people aren't aware that NSF certification is the one of the highest certifications a natural product can have. In fact, um, all the Olympians, all the major sports like NFL and, and Major League Baseball and everything, any product that they take have to have an NSF certification. And what that does is it says it works exactly how it says it does it's um all pure the ingredients are exactly what they are i mean they it's a very rigorous certification to get they even check your manufacturing process and everything um but we wanted to hold it to that high of a standard to that high of a level to be sure that our customers knew exactly what they were getting and knew that and had the confidence that it, it works very cool very cool so um just diving more into this um so i guess can you kind of go over what a trontil is made out of and how kind of these ingredients work to help with these digestive symptoms, the gas, the bloating? Yeah, absolutely. Before I get into that, yeah. I'd like to take a step back and describe like how these symptoms come about in the body. Okay. So what happens is there's some kind of triggering event. And this triggering event, it can be a um, high dose of antibiotics, a surgery, some kind of big stressor in, on the body. It can even be depression, something like that, that stresses out the body enough to make the small intestine slow down. Once the small intestine slows down, um, every, it, the small intestine is supposed to be a free flowing stream, right? Everything goes right on through it down into the colon. But when the small intestine slows down, it allows for bacteria that normally flow right on through into the colon. It allows for those bacteria to sit and hang out in the small intestine for longer. Once that happens, as the bacteria sit in the small intestine, they feed off the starches or carbohydrates that we eat, and they give off hydrogen as a byproduct. Once there's a proliferation of hydrogen in the small intestine, it allows for another actor, it's called archaea bacteria, which is very different from our normal bacteria. Um, it's so different, in fact, that the ribosome structure, just the structure of the cell, is so different from normal bacteria, or what we call normal bacteria, yeah. um, that our modern antibiotics don't touch the ar archaea bacteria. So the archaea bacteria come in, they love hydrogen, they use hydrogen to um, as their fuel and produce methane. Once there's a proliferation of methane, methane is a paralytic. So as your body tries to get rid of it, because only 20% of methane can be absorbed by the body, the other 80% your body tries to get rid of. And because it's a paralytic, it slows down the small intestine even more, and as it goes into the colon, it acts as a paralytic and causes constipation. And the other type of bacteria that come in um, give off hydrogen sulfide. They use the hydrogen and give off hydrogen sulfide, and hydrogen sulfide is what actually causes diarrhea. So you have all these bacteria in, in the small intestine. And as the methane acts as a paralytic, it slows everything down even more, which causes more bacteria to come in, more archaea bacter, and then causes more methane. So you have this vicious cycle, which is why a lot of people with IBS can never get rid of it. So you just have this cycle that you can't get out of. So how Achantil works is it has three natural ingredients. The first one is just peppermint. Peppermint comes in, soothes the small intestine, soothes the spathoms, just kind of coats everything, calms everything down a little bit for our other two ingredients to come in and work. Our other two ingredients are our workhorses. Um, the second ingredient is Quebracho Colorado. Now Quebracho Colorado um, is not the same as Quebracho Blanco. A lot of people research it and they come up with Quebracho Blanco. Quebracho Blanco is white Quebracho completely different. This yeah. is Red Quebracho or Quebracho Colorado. Quebracho Colorado has two functions here. The first, when you look at Quebracho Colorado, it's a macromolecule and it has all these hydroxyl bonds around it. Basically, all that means is that it loves hydrogen, it loves to connect to the hydrogen. So it acts as a hydrogen sink and soaks up hydrogen. So there's less hydrogen to be made in the methane. Okay. The second function of the um, Quebracho is that um, it's a very old species of tree. Quebracho is a very old species of tree that is learned in nature 
and I find this fascinating because I'm a huge, I'm a huge nerd. So yeah, I'm um, too. So yeah, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's learned in nature how to protect itself from very old species of fungus and bacteria, including the Archaeobacter. So what it does is it finds these Archaeobacter and the Kibracho um, molecules start attacking the lipid bilayer or basically just making holes in the cell wall of this Archaeobacter. Once that happens, it allows for our third ingredient to come in. The third ingredient is just horse chestnut. Now, horse chestnut in nature also knows how to attack these, but it, it can't make the holes in the cell wall on its own. So once it finds a hole, it goes right down into these um, archaeobacter and shuts down the enzymatic reactor. Basically, all that is, that's the place where these get their fuel from. Once they can't produce their own fuel, they can't give off methane. So yeah. it shuts down these archaeobacter so they can't produce methane. The second function of the horse chestnut is in nature, it has a lot of bactericidal properties. So it starts getting rid of the normal bacteria. So Atrantial is doing three things. It's getting rid of the hydrogen, so there's less hydrogen to be made into methane or hydrogen sulfide. Mm -hmm. It's attacking the archaea bacteria so that they can't um, produce the methane. And it's getting rid of the other bacteria as well. So now we're clearing out all this bacteria or the bacterial overgrowth. This is where SIBO, the term comes from, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. We're getting rid of all that bacterial overgrowth and allowing it to move back into the colon where it should be because bacteria are great. We have tons of bacteria in our colon and they all work for different, um, have a different function and they're beneficial for the body. And bacteria are great when they're in the right place. And in the small intestine, they're not supposed to be there. So Atrantia allows them all to move back into the colon where they should be, allows the small intestine to be a free flowing stream again and gets rid of all those gases that are causing the, um, the problems. Very cool. Um, just a couple of questions. So um, basically the peppermint is used to kind of relax the gut. It's a, you know, it's an antispasmodic accreminative. So that has that action. And then the cabracho comes in and basically you said it soaks up the hydrogen. Um, I just, I uh -huh. was a little, just a little bit. Can you just clarify a little bit about the cabracho? Yeah, so what it does, if, it, if you look at it, it has all these hydroxyl bonds on the outside. So yeah. it wants to attach, the hydroxyl bonds want to attach to the hydrogen. So it's using up the hydrogen, so there's less hydrogen to be made into methane. But yeah. then it's also attacking the archaea bacteria. So it has two functions there. And there's a, and as it's using up hydrogen, there's also less hydrogen to be made into hydrogen sulfide. Now, not that we don't have hydrogen all over in the body, but yeah. just when there's a proliferation like there is in bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, then that is what starts causing a problem. But naturally, we have some hydrogen floating around at all times, and that's fine, except when there's an overabundance. Yeah, definitely. So I guess coming off of that, um, I know that it works really well on, uh, you know, the Archaeobacter and, you know, soaking up the hydrogen. So would this be effective as well in, you know, the hydrogen sulfide cases? Because it's still soaking up the hydrogen, right? So it's kind of getting rid of the fuel source, right? So how does it work there with someone with diarrhea? Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, so they so it is getting rid of the hydrogen, so there's less to be made into hydrogen sulfide. And the bacteria that produce the hydrogen sulfide are just another type of bacteria that um, go in the small intestine, right? So the um, the ingredients in there are getting rid of all the bacteria, including the ones that make methane as well as the ones that make hydrogen sulfide, and clearing out the small intestine. So we've had great results on people who, whether they have diarrhea or constipation, or some people go back and forth between both, um, it, it really works on both types of bacteria. Yeah, that's very cool and very unique because like you said before in the beginning of the interview, like there's not, it's hard to kind of, you know, inhibit these methane producing bugs, right? Because they don't react right. to, because they don't react to things like Zyfaxin as well, right? Is that correct? Right. That's yeah. correct because, um, like I mentioned before, they're completely different species. They're not the, what we think of as normal bacteria. So these bacteria, their ribosome structure is completely different. So antibiotics, when we take, so Zyvaxin is an antibiotic, and when we take antibiotics, they're looking for a specific ribosome structure that they can attack. These archaea bacteria do not have that structure. So they, they may take out the normal bacteria, 
in your body, but the archaea are still going to be hanging out in there. So that's why a lot of times when we did the studies on Zyfaxin, people might feel better initially, but then a couple weeks later they come back and they have the symptoms again. And that's because it's taking out the normal bacteria. So you're going to feel better for a little while, but these archaea bacteria are still going to be in there, still going to be proliferating hydrogen sulfide or methane. Yeah. Gotcha. So I guess getting a little bit into now, um, how to use a trontile correctly. Let's say someone, you know, has symptoms of SIBO or IBS and they're having bloating and gas and they think that, you know, they want to give Atrontil a try. So I guess um, walk us through kind of the correct protocol for someone who does have, you know, these symptoms, these IBS bacterial overgrowth symptoms. Right. So people who have chronic symptoms, um, whether they're, you label them IBS or SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, and it, just to throw this in, on our box in the U.S., we have just the symptoms, right? It says um, bloating, abdominal discomfort, or change in bowel habits, whether that's uh, diarrhea or constipation. On our bottle in Canada, it says IBS. Uh, okay. Not because they're any different. Um, the symptoms are all the same. It's just in the United States, as a natural product, the FDA does not let you um, say a claim a disease. So okay. we can't put IBS on there because that's a disease um, yeah. according to FDA and we're a natural product. So um, so Atrandil does work on the symptoms of IBS and SIBO. Um, but so for people who have chronic symptoms, who have it every day and they just feel awful every day, these um, are the ones who we would suggest taking two capsules three times per day with meals until your symptoms have been resolved. Now. Um, some people see results right away. Other people, it can take up to 30 days to see complete relief. I would say the majority of people, it takes about 10 to 20 days, but it can take a little longer. These symptoms, it really depends on the amount of bacterial overgrowth you have and yeah. how quickly it can move through your body. However, I would say um, we always recommend stopping probiotics um, until your symptoms have been relieved and trying to stick to a, a low carb diet um, until your symptoms have been relieved. Now, you don't have to, but if you think about it, if you take pro probiotics, when you're having these issues, you're really adding more fuel to the fire, right? Because you're putting in more bacteria into the small intestine when it's not moving. So, yeah. um, so that's why we recommend just stop until you have relief. And once everything's flowing again, um, you can take them. And as well as the carbs, you're just feeding the bacteria. So we just say try and stick to you as low carb diet as possible. You know, you don't have to go crazy with it, but just to try and help limit the fuel that they're getting. Um, and then once you've had relief, uh, you can add back in the probiotics as well as the carbs. And then we recommend taking a maintenance dose. Um, the reason we recommend a maintenance dose, we say one to two capsules every morning. Now, some people don't take it and that's fine. Um, some people say, well, why? You don't get to the root cause of the problem. You know, are you just treating the symptoms? Why do I have to have a maintenance dose? The reason is, is because everyone's body is different, right? And something triggered your body to slow down the small intestine in the beginning, right? We And, and we don't exactly know why those triggering events happen, but, but like I said, whether it's a surgery, a high dose of antibiotics, some kind of big stressor on the body causes it to slow down. So even though we clear up all the bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, it doesn't mean that you won't have a triggering event again, you know, a couple weeks from now or even a couple years from now. You know, it, it could happen. You may not. But um, most people do like to stick to a maintenance dose just so that they know it won't return again. Yeah. And I also know that, you know, just from Dr. Pimentel's research, there is, you know, a certain portion of people, right, who have motility disorders. So that could, be, that could be another reason from food poisoning, right, or some something that right. damages the nerve function in the gut. So um, that could be another reason why having a maintenance dose may be important for people like that, because they do Absolutely. Need yeah. Yeah. And then there's the, the other type of um, people who take it. Um, some people say, you know, I just get these symptoms when I have to eat pasta or when I eat bread, like those people who have their, their trigger, trigger foods that cause these symptoms. And for those people, we just say, take two capsules um, right before you eat those foods. Or sometimes, you know, people can say, well, you know, I didn't, I, 
I didn't, um, I ate this and now I'm just feeling really bad. I don't have these symptoms all the time, but I ate this and now I'm feeling bad or take it, you know, you can take it after you, um, you feel those symptoms coming on, but just take two capsules at that time and it'll help to relieve those symptoms. And usually those people who have the symptoms just occasionally, um, they can, you, you feel it start working pretty quickly. I'd say within 20 minutes, if not sooner. So people who just have occasional symptoms, just take two, you can take two up to three times a day. Um, and it'll really help with those trigger symptoms. And then the last type of person who really takes it is, um, Atrantil is, is made of polyphenols, right? And polyphenols, I mean, the research is so abundant right now. What they, They're anti-aging, you know, anti-inflammatory. There's studies out there that says it helps with Alzheimer's disease. I mean, there's so many things out there right now about polyphenols. Um, Atrantil is just packed with polyphenols and antioxidants. Um, it's so good for you. Everyone at Atrantil takes it every day, whether or not they have any type of symptoms. Um, and the other thing is, and one of the things with us getting um, our NSF for sport certification is that it really helps with muscle recovery. So a lot of athletes take it because it helps with the recovery time. So it has a lot of beneficial um, beneficial functions that you know you you take it on a prophylaxis type basis. Cool. Um, and then, so when someone starts um, Atron Teal, is, is there a chance for any die-off like symptoms? Yeah. So a small percentage of people do get die-off. And uh, what die-off is, it's, it's not a reaction to Atron Teal, but what's happening is that um, as these bacteria are being attacked, they give off endotoxins. And when those endotoxins are relief, released, um, they go into your body and they can cause die-off effects. And that can be um, mild cold or flu type symptoms, or we even see um, an increase in your digestive sy uh, symptoms. So a lot of people will say, I started taking this and a week later, like my diarrhea actually got worse or my bloating got worse. Well, that that's a sign of die-off. And actually, if you have die-off symptoms, as, as much as we don't want to have it, but if you do, it's actually a good sign because it, set, it shows you that you're treating the right thing, Atrantil is working, and soon you'll have relief from your symptoms. Um, the one thing that we do say is, um, one thing that can help with die-off is just taking a dose of um, aspirin or ibuprofen because COX inhibitors actually help um, to prevent those endotoxins um, from going into your body, and, and so it helps with those symptoms. So people who do have die-off, just take a dose of aspirin or ibuprofen. That'll really help with those symptoms. Okay, cool. Um, and then... So is there anyone who, or let's say someone, you know, they're trying Atron Teal and it's really kind of, it's not giving them the relief they're looking for. Um, is, have you seen in certain types of people where maybe they need to, you know, they need other things or they need to, you know, combine it with something else? Yeah. So, um, I would see it, say, and, and, you know, Dr. Brown, um, he's, like I said, a gastroenterologist, he's still a practicing gastroenterologist. And so he sees basically his practice has become an IBS practice almost because of yeah. Atrantil and everything and his research in it. Um, and so what he says is, you know, he sees 90% of the time, if it really is bacterial overgrowth, that Atrantil is going to help. Now, some people um, have have taken it a little longer or even um, increased to three capsules three times a day and then said they didn't have relief you know at two capsules three times a day but they increased to three capsules three times a day and they had relief okay. that, that word has worked with some people um, other people um, usually if if they have the symptom of bloating right so bloating is the huge um, kind of red flag that is bacterial overgrowth now yeah. if you just have like constipation with no bloating or diarrhea with no bloating, like that's kind of a red flag that it, it probably isn't bacterial overgrowth, right? Yeah. Because there's so many ways that like constipation can be caused, you know, it could be opioid induced, it could be a motility issue, a functional motility issue, it can be all these different things. But it's really the people who have bloating and abdominal discomfort um, with or without diarrhea constant or constipation or both. So some people just have the bloating period and that's fine too. Atrantil will help with that. But really we see if they have the bloating, Atrantil will work. Um, 
Sometimes people like to add in some type of motility agent with Atrantil. We've seen that with people because just to help, once Atrantil it gets this uh, gets rid of bacterial overgrowth, just to help clear it out faster to get yeah. it uh, to get it flowing faster. So I would say that usually if Atrantil doesn't help and bloating is one of your main sy symptoms, you you want to kind of start looking at is there something else going on? Yeah, definitely. Um... So awesome. Um, just to kind of summarize for people. Uh, so if, if they're taking it, if they have bacterial overgrowth or suspect they have these symptoms, um, you usually recommend, is it, was it 30 days, two capsules, three times a day? Yeah. It's, it's really just until you see relief from okay. your symptoms, right? Because Once you have relief, you can reduce to the maintenance dose, but it can take up to 30 days. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then the maintenance dose is one to two caps once a day. Is that correct? Or? Yeah, one okay. to two caps. We, we recommend in the morning. Um, but yeah, one to two capsules once a day in the morning. Cool. And then last question, just for me personally, out of curiosity, um, is this something that could be beneficial when traveling to help prevent kind of a food poisoning event or something like that? Well, absolutely, absolutely not. You know, it really depends from from what you know, um, what you're getting that food poisoning from. Yeah. What happens is when you go to other countries, right? You're you're susceptible to different types of bacteria in different types of food that that you ha aren't your body's not used to, right? Yeah. So, um, so absolutely, these other types of bacteria and stuff. The neat thing about Atrantil is that. It, it's so like I said, it's a macro molecule, so it's not absorbed. So it doesn't have systemic side effects. We didn't have any side effects in our clinical trials. There's no known side effects out there because because it's a macro molecule, it's not absorbed into the bloodstream. So what it does is it goes um, as you ingest it, it goes into the small intestine and then it goes into the colon until it's excreted out. In the colon, it acts as a prebiotic, not a probiotic, but a prebiotic, so it nourishes the microbiome. So it's really helping um, your whole, and what it also is a neat thing, um, it has anti-inflammatory properties in the gut. Um, we, we don't advertise for this or anything, but we have a lot of Crohn's and ulcerative colitis patients who tell us they took Atrantil and it's been amazing for them because Atrantil's anti-inflammatory properties. So if you get some kind of food poisoning or some kind of gastritis or something, your gut is totally inflamed, um, Atrantil would, would help for that. But like I said, it's not an on-label type thing, but for sure, like when I travel, I take it with me because it it's definitely helps with gut inflammation and with the microbiome in general. Yeah, definitely. So very cool. So it seems like Atrantil just really has a you know, a couple of different effective mechanisms of action being, you know, also a prebiotic in the colon and then helping to kind of, you know, clear out the small bowel and get it back to the way it should be, which is like very little bacteria, right? So. Right, right. And, and so, I mean, the small intestine has bacteria in it, but it should just keep flowing through, right? So we say sterile you know but it's not yeah. sterile obviously because all the bacteria come through it but um but it should just keep flowing into the colon but you want to have your gut in check because the healthier your gut is the healthier your whole body is going to be your microbiome is response it has been shown to be responsible for you know anxiety depression alzheimer's a cardiovascular disease i mean the list goes on and on and we don't realize how important our gut really is and how important it is that we're functioning properly. I mean, it's, it's really is amazing how much it's actually linked to. Yeah. It's, it's so cool. And, and, you know, it's just so important that we, you know, do the best we can to keep our gut health in check. Right. Because it has, it's so beneficial. It's the center of the health for the most part. Absolutely. And we're just touching on, the very tip of it right now, like what it's actually responsible for. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, we weren't talking about the microbiome really. And, and what's even awesome is uh, right now today and talking about IBS. So IBS, like I said before, and, he, and even today, there's a lot of doctors who just say, oh, you know, it's just from stress. You have IBS. It's just from stress. You know, it was, that's why it's called irritable bowel syndrome is because it's just a syndrome, right? Nobody had a cause for it. It's yeah. just these symptoms that people had and, and they didn't have a cause for it. Right now, we're in a paradigm shift 
of saying, no, there is a cause for it. It's not, you're not making it up. It's not just from stress. It's these bacteria that are causing bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine. There is a cause and we can treat it. So that's really exciting right now. It's, it's where 15 years ago, um, ulcer disease was. So ulcer disease, um, people who had ulcers, they used to say, oh, it's just from stress, right? You need to decrease your stress and you'll get rid of these ulcers. Well, there was a researcher who said, no, it's, it's actually from bacteria. Nobody believed him. So he had a vial of H. pylori, a type of bacteria. He actually took a whole vial just to prove it, almost killed himself. But that was the first time that anyone actually stopped and said, you know what, they, these bacteria actually do cause ulcers. So it's not just from stress. So that was about 15 years ago, they had that paradigm shift in ulcer disease. And that's where we are today, which is why, and I thank you so much for having me on, it's so important to educate people because you know we're learning so much daily in the medical field that you know our medicine is changing. So IBS, where it used to be just, you know, pat you on the head. Now we have a treatment for it. And it's so exciting because there were so many people that suffered from it. Some, you know, could go about their day, but it, they weren't comfortable. And other ones, it really was debilitating and there was nothing out there for them. So we're just so excited to have something that we know works, that's tested, that really is what it is. And we can say, you know what, we have a solution for you. Yeah, I, I agree. It's super exciting that, you know, we're moving towards, you know, finding more solutions and more root causes for these issues, especially gut issues, because it's, it's crazy. You see, especially in this day and age, you see more and more people come down with digestive issues, which is, you know, it kind of stinks, but, you know, we, we're figuring out better solutions and we're figuring out how to kind of, you know, have a healthier gut. So that's a positive side of going forward. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I thanks so much for joining me today, Brandy, and just kind of helping educate us on, you know, what Atrontil is and who could maybe benefit and try this to see if it can give them some, you know, digestive and bloating relief. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. And, you know, if people have questions or anything, they can always write in through our website and we're happy to help. And also, you know, if for those people, you know, who you asked, you know, what if Autrantil doesn't help? If they try Autrantil and it doesn't work, we always have a money back guarantee so that they have that option as well. So it's, it's worth trying. Awesome. Yeah. There's nothing to lose. And, and again, it's a, what's another cool thing about Atron Teal to me is that it's, you know, made out of a natural ingredients, which is pretty cool. You know, it's not like taking an antibiotic, you know, the system systemic side effects and, you know, it's really nothing to lose trying it. So. Right. And, and the other thing is, is that even if you take it, I mean, it's only doing beneficial things, right? Through the polyphenols and the antioxidants. And so, I mean, you can take it long-term for as long as you want without side effects and actually improving your health. So cool. absolutely. It's, it's exciting. And like I said, I'm a huge nerd, so I can talk about this all day and I get excited about it. So yeah. thank you so much for allowing me on here. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and, you know, keep up the good work and finding solutions for these issues. So yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you.